Before we deal with the actual topics, let me give you first some brief introduction about anatomy in general. In this module, you will be introduced to the different branches of anatomy with their basic definition. This will give you an insight on what are the major focus of anatomical study and will help you to understand the need for such. Likewise, part of this module will briefly discuss the basic directional terms necessary to help you navigate in your search for various anatomical structures. An understanding of the different planes, positions, sections, and directions relative to the animal body or its parts is necessary to follow the procedures for future dissection activities. At the end of this module, you should be able to define anatomy and its sub-branches, understand the guidelines for proper naming of anatomical structures, and define the different directional terms. Anatomy is the branch of knowledge concerned with the form, disposition, and structure of the body and its part. The word, which is of Greek origin, literally means cutting apart, and the dissection of the dead is the traditional method used in anatomy. Veterinary anatomy is the specific branch of anatomy that deals with forms and structure of animals. It has the following sub-branches. Macroscopic anatomy or gross anatomy deals with a structure large enough to be seen by an aided eye. Microscopic anatomy or histology deals with structures seen only under the microscope. That includes the structure of the cells and tissues. Comparative anatomy is the study of structures of various species of animal with emphasis on those that aids in classification. Developmental anatomy or embryology is the study of the stages through which the organism evolves from conception to birth. In our case, we will be dealing with gross veterinary anatomy. Anatomy can also be categorized based on the focus of study or dissection. The information obtained by dissection can be arranged and organized in two principal and complementary ways. It can either be systemic anatomy or regional anatomy. In systemic anatomy, the study of focus is directed to the group of organs that are closely related in their activities that they constitute body systems with an evident common function. Example is the dissection focus only on the digestive system as seen in this slide. On the other hand, Regional anatomy is directly concerned with the form and relationships of all the organs present in a particular parts or region of the body. Example in this slide is the anatomy of the head. Note that it pays less attention to function. However, this approach has compensating importance from its immediate application to clinical work. In general, this course follows systemic dissection as each module is divided per system. The terms used for structures of the body are numerous, and in the course of medical history, about 50,000 names have been given to some 5,000 structures. This has led to considerable ambiguity. In the hope of reducing this confusion, the International Committee on Veterinary Gross Anatomical Nomenclature through the World Association of Veterinary Anatomists prepared and published an internationally agreed-on vocabulary, the Nomina Anatomica Veterinaria, or NAV. It was first introduced in 1968 and has since obtained wide acceptance. This NAV is currently in the sixth edition. In a gist, there are seven guidelines used by anatomical nomenclature committees in harmonizing the naming of structures. First, each anatomical concept should be designed by a single term. Synonyms have been used in rare exceptions, usually as transitional terms, but in some cases, 
both terms may be used, such as peronius and fibularis. Second, each term should be in Latin. Greek remains in some terms, for example, ischiatic or sciatic. Third, each term should be as short and simple as possible. Fourth, the terms should be easy to remember and should have instructive and descriptive value. Fifth, structures that are closely related topographically should have similar names. For example, femur, femoral artery, femoral vein, and femoral nerve. Sixth, differentiating adjectives should generally be opposite. For example, major versus minor, superficial versus deep. And last, terms derived from proper names or eponyms should not be used because the choice of eponym has varied by country and was not descriptive of the structure. For example, the eustachian tube is also known as the auditory tube. The canal of Schlem is also known as the scleral venous sinus. The foramen Monroe is also known as the interventricular foramen. Plane is a surface, real or imaginary, along which any two points can be connected by a straight line. Median plane divides the head, body, or limb longitudinally into equal right halves. This is the median plane. Sagittal plane passes through the head, body, or limb parallel to the median plane, meaning any plane parallel to this median plane is termed as sagittal plane. Transverse plane cuts across the head, body, or limb at a right angle to its long axis or across the long axis of an organ or a part. This is the transverse plane dividing the animal into cranial and caudal part. Last is the dorsal, frontal, or sometimes called coronal plane. It runs at right angles to the both median and transverse planes and divides the body, head or structure into dorsal and ventral parts. For you to remember, imagine a dog partially submerged in a flood. The part visually seen is the dorsal side, this one, and the one that is submerged under the water is the ventral side. The demarcation between the two sides is the imaginary frontal plane, as you can see here. Here are the examples of imaginary planes applied on a skull. Median plane imaginary divides the structure into left and right halves. Transverse plane imaginary divides the structure into a cranial and caudal part. Frontal plane imaginary divides the structure into dorsal and ventral parts. However, in anatomy, we do not simply imagine the planes. To study deeper structures, we dissect, thus we cut. Sections are cuts through various planes of the body to display the internal structure. Transverse or cross-section is a cut through the transverse plane. Sagittal or longitudinal section is a cut through the sagittal plane or the long axis dividing the body or structure into an equal right and left halves. Here is an example of the sections on the same organ or structure. The first image is a transverse or cross section of the nasal cavity while the second image shows a longitudinal section of the nasal cavity. Both are the same structure but shows different angle or view of the structure. Since you are now familiar with the different planes, you are now ready to understand the different directional terms. Precise descriptive terms are used to describe the position of a particular structure. Take note that for the following terms to have definite meaning, quadrupeds like dogs must be in anatomical position, which is standing on its four limbs. Let us again study the figure on this slide. 
Note that most directional terms are arranged in pairs and are generally opposite with one another. Let's begin with the terms lateral and medial. Lateral means toward the side of the body or away from the median plane. In contrast, medial means toward the median plane. For example, the limbs are located laterally, while the vertebrae are located medially. Next, let's differentiate the terms dorsal and ventral. Dorsal means toward the back of the trunk or backbone, or by extension, toward the corresponding surface of the tail or head. Ventral, on the other hand, means toward the belly or mid-abdominal wall or the corresponding surface of the head or tail. For example, the vertebral column is located dorsally while the umbilicus can be seen ventrally. Cranial and caudal are another directional terms that are opposite with one another. Cranial means toward the head while caudal means toward the tail. However, when dealing with structures of the head, the term cranial is usually not used. Instead, the term rostral is used as an alternative which means toward the muscle. Next, let us differentiate the terms proximal and distal. Proximal means relatively close to a given part, usually the axis of the body, while distal means farther from the axis of the body. For example, the head of the humerus is located at the proximal end of the humerus, while humeral condyles are present at the distal end of the humerus. The terms superficial and deep are also used as directional terms. Superficial refers to the proximity to the surface of the body, while deep refers to proximity to the center of an anatomical structure. You will encounter these terms mostly under the myology module of this lecture. Axial is the term used in reference to the structure nearest to the long axis of a given part. So this is the axial part of the distal limb. A baxial, on the other hand, is a term used in reference to structure away from the long axis of a given part. Palmar refers to the ventral surface of the manus when describing the dorsal limb, while plantar refers to the ventral surface of the pes when describing the pelvic limb. Both the dorsal side is termed dorsal. This ends the presentation on Module 1. I hope you are now familiar with the sub-branches of anatomy, the general guidelines in naming structures, as well as various anatomical directional terms that you will most likely encounter while taking this course. At the written course module, a sample assessment regarding directional terms is provided for you to practice and apply your new learning. Likewise, a graded quiz is attached with this module for you to answer whenever you are ready. Good luck and thank you for listening.